My friend Carl told me once the thing he swore he'd never do was to work in a takeaway. Carl used to get angry about the representation of our people, particularly men like us. He'd say to me, why is it whenever we're in films we're not rugged and handsome and we aren't playing heroes? And it drove him crazy because we weren't rich and in this country we weren't even Asians. But we're all hungry for a lie. Carl wanted to be an actor, he said. But he married young and he had kids to feed and bills to pay, so he did the thing he swore he'd never do. He ran a Chinese takeaway. He cooked for the late night crowd who came in pissed and ordered by numbers. Who didn't care if it was dripping in monosodium glutamate or grease or fat, the way Carl would never cook it, but like they always say our food is. And Carl cooked for people who were too tired to cook themselves, who just wanted to watch telly and wanted the easy comfort of the numbers on the Chinese takeaway menu. Digression number one, our food. There was this BBC series about migrant stories, and when it got to the Chinese story, it was all about food. It was an hour of food, and more food, and restaurants, and takeaways, and how tasty our dim sum is, and how slurpy our noodles were. It, it was all food, 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 and well look now we've got Covid hate, and they're smashing the windows of our restaurants and takeaways, throwing bricks through the windows of our restaurants and takeaways, and pissing on the floor of our restaurants and takeaways, and calling us names, and attacking us in the streets, and saying it's all because of our food. But I never met an Asian person in my life who ever ate a bat, and I had to Google what a pangolin is because I had no fucking idea, and I had to Carl. So, I guess our food won't save us when racist love turns to racist hate.